initial dilator. I'm gonna basically hit the, the set turn of four five, and I'm gonna like this, we'll walk down. That's how you're like, how the hell did you target that? I hit something big, shot. Anything, so I tap it like this, goes on the nerve, hopefully she'll go first. Right? Yeah. Or she jump. The skinny meal with the blue dot. The skinny meal person and the blue dot. All good? You be quiet, I'm kidding. Make sure that that's not a nerve right there, see that? I identify the optimal entry point, then I use the initial dilator. I dock on the facet joint and then I walk my way down to Camden's triangle needle and perform a chromatodiscogram. It contains methylene blue and contrast media. And I'm essentially doing a discogram and looking for a leakage pattern out the back. And there it is right there. Once the discogram is performed, I serially dilate and also externally read to create a foraminotomy window that allows me to move away from the exiting nerve root. You can see the ream is going down sequentially and getting bigger and bigger. I have the cannula in now. I check its position on the AP view. That tells me I'm slightly lateral. So this should be, it should be south. That's falling out of anyone. Yep. Probably helmet probe. So it's kind of like a bipolar radio freak out. That's right. He's coming around the exiting uh, the uh pedal, right? Yeah. Using the laser again just to open this up, make a perfect annulotomy window. The first step of the discectomy is to quickly evacuate the nucleus and remove as much uh, dismaterial as possible after trying a variety of different strategies. The best one seems to be utilizing the spinning brushes. I do that under floral to make sure it's in the right position. Good. It's going to spin like this. It's got a little bayonet right there so that it'll reach. If necessary, I'll even put an extra bend on here so that it reaches even higher up. So it's going to spin like this. I got the depth grip on the cannula too because I do not want it to back up or it'll lose the spinning. Shot. Oh ho ho ho! I love that position. I want to be. Parallel to the end plate. But first, this is just an evacuation and nucleotomy, not end plate prep yet. Oh, look at all that disc that came out. It's blue because we stained it blue so I can see what's going on. Yeah, I, I always take a lateral x-ray to make sure that I know where the brush is and the cannula. The cannula backs up at all, I got to take it out or push it back in, I mean. Keep going until it looks kind of wimpy. 
smell it? Are the mainstay of the rapid nucleotomy and in fact it tends to remove a lot of the end plate cartilage. After examining the uh, end plate after using the brushes, um, I either have to use the Elman probe to determine how much cartilage is left or a ball tip feeler. And if there's just a thin layer of cartilage, I can usually remove it using the YAG Holmium side firing laser. But if the cartilage is thicker and more firm, sometimes it takes continued mechanical debridement. Is this expandable end plate scraper that I call the Batman. And under fluoroscopic guidance, I very carefully rotate this as a rotating shaver. It's unilaterally sided, so one side is sharp and the other side is blunt. So I do one end plate at a time, so I can get excellent tactile feel. Check this bad boy out. It's like wings that come out. So this one's modified so that only one side is cutting, this gold stuff. And this one is really smooth, so it's going to push off. And this is going to cut like that. And that greatly increases my tactile feedback and hopefully that will decrease the rate at which I inadvertently penetrate the end plate. I'll feel. And again, I use lateral floor to make sure that I'm directly in line with the disc space and parallel to the end plate with all my end plate preparation instruments. And then I palpate with a ball tip feeler or the almond probe and also visualize it with the endoscope. That way I can ensure that I have a very good end plate prep. In addition to the brushes, I also utilize a variety of articulating instruments. This is an articulating cupped curette. It's difficult to get it right on the surface, but every once in a while you'll need it. I do not use this very often. There's also a ring scraper that helps evacuate the nucleus. Mirror, using the laser to clean up the disc space, make sure there's no cartilage on the end plate so that the bones heal together successfully. This is a really nice end plate prep. I love that. I wish it was wider, but then again, I always wish it was wider. Just at the level of the disc Once the end plate is properly prepared, I insert a expandable spacer. Again, utilizing lateral image throughout the whole procedure to make sure that it is in the right position. You can see it expanding. And the key here is that once the bones stop moving, you should stop expanding. If you keep on expanding, it's very easy to crack the end plate and get a lot of subsidence. And again, want to try to get it in the middle, but on an axial CT or MRI view, you want to have that going at a 45 degree angle so that you can get the largest, longest cage possible. The most common limitation is its position relative to the posterior vertebral body line because you do not want the implant to be protuberant into the working triangle and threaten the exiting nerve root. Sometimes I will 
examine the position of the cage and look around and even use the ball tip feeler with the endoscope to identify exactly where everything is. Here's a start to finish summary of the second level. Chromatodiscogram. You can see the leakage out the back. Serial dilation and reaming. Palpation examination. Creating the annulotomy window with the drill. Using the brushes. Using the Batman. And then the implant. Again, use lots of floral to position the implant exactly where you want it. And as you expand, don't get too greedy. Be cognizant of whether or not the bone is changing position as you expand the cage. If the cage expands but the bone doesn't move, slow down or stop because you do not want to bust through the end plate. I got a little greedy on this one. It's still looking good overall. I like the position on the AP view. And then put in screws through separate mini open or percutaneous incisions. I use navigation for this.